out from around here. No, sir. That's a reform school shirt if I ever seen one. No, it isn't, sir. You're a runaway of some kind. Which way are you running? I'm going down river, sir. Down river where? Florida, sir. It's a long walk. Get in. Not here. There. through Kenneth. Of course, they got a nosy old devil for a marshal there. We don't have one in Delphi. That's where I'm going. Make up your mind, boy. Delphi, son. You can see it all from where you're standing. Nothing much ever happened here. Railroad missed us. Never had a real flood. Even a cyclone snubbed us. Never had a murder, a bank robbery, or tar and feather. Folks here just don't amount to much. I guess not, sir. I have it your way. batch of chili today.
quarter teaspoons of chili powder. <clears throat> he did it again! One. He did it again! He did it again! He did it again! Untie that horse. I... I can't. It's... it's... You heard my sister. Untie the horse. Leave that horse alone. Time up again. Tobias Brown, I've told you my grandfather's statue is not to be used as a hitching post. That's purely true, Miss Anna Love Price. But I don't know of any law says I can't tie up to public property, and this statue is public property. It's the statue of one of the great men of Missouri, and you should have better taste than to desecrate his memory every time you drive into town. As far as I can see, that's about all the old general is good for. Well, you would think so. How could the son of a barefooted sharecropper think anything else? Well, I'm not barefoot now, Miss Anna Love Price. I'm not sharing crops either. Yes, but you would be if it hadn't been for my grandfather. Why, he even gave your father a 10-acre start in life. Seems like I've heard all this before, Miss Anna Love Price. But you go right ahead. This runaway kid never heard it. The only reason you come to Delphi is to show off in front of all these people and try to impress them with how rich you are. That's part of it. That's all of it. You love to strut around the square in your fancy clothes and brag about how much land you own. Oh, no, ma'am. I got another reason. Yes, you come here to insult my grandfather's memory and to humiliate me. I'd like to see you get mad. Puts a little uh, fire in you. Takes away some of that uh, peekity look. You know, you stay mad a little more, you might get some man interested in you as a wife. Do you good. You're overstepping yourself. I overstepped myself years ago, Miss Anna Love Price. If I hadn't, I'd still be plowing for your family. Now, if you don't mind, I'll go to your bank and uh, count my money. That man is a barbarian. Not a bad one-word description of Tobias. He is a rich barbarian. Money cannot make a gentleman, Mr. McGee. He's a crude, ignorant, loutish, obnoxious oaf. Is it true, Miss Price, that the, uh, the general chewed tobacco? My name's Doyle McGee. You're new around here, aren't you? Yes, sir. What do they call you where you come from? Byron, sir. Byron, huh? Sounds like it would be Irish, or Scotch. Could be Welsh. I guess so, sir. Is their last name goes with it? 
Yes, sir. It's Gil Turner, sir. Byron Gil Turner. Sounds like a writer's name. No, sir. It's just Byron Turner. It's good enough. Got uh, kinfolk here in Delphi? No, sir. I'm on my way to Florida. Florida, huh? Well, nice country, some parts of it. Family live there? No, sir, I'm just going to Florida. I hope you've got more money than I had when I hit Florida. The living's pretty high there. I've got some money, sir. Well, that uh, puts us in the same boat. I've got some money. Just how much do you figure some adds up to? I've got almost a dollar, sir. Well, you may be a little pressed for cash by the time you get to Florida. Suppose we go over to find as Doherty's and uh, talk this out over a hamburger. I've eaten, sir. Yeah, I know, but uh, this one's on me. Thank you kindly, sir, but I don't make a practice of accepting things from strangers. Well, I used to think that way myself. Now that you mention it, I, I guess I still do. I'm going over to Shelbyville a little later on. If uh, you want to wait while I knock out an editorial, I'll uh, give you a lift. It's on the way to Florida. Not much sense walking when you can ride, is there? No, sir. Well, all I got to say is that they just ought to make Tobias Brown quit aggravating Miss Price. That gummit, they ought to box his ears. They ought to make him in, they ought to just let him know that, that, that we ain't, beg your pardon, Willie, that we ain't gonna put up with it no more. You're absolutely right, Clyde. And I am going to do something about it. Since Herb and me here constitute a quorum of the Board of Selectmen, I hereby call a special meeting right now. Whereas Tobias Brown has offended the citizens of Delphi, I move that Clyde Hamilton be appointed as a committee of one to tell said Tobias Brown to mend his ways or, well, to mend his ways. I second the motion. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. No, hold your horses. I, I'm again that. Well, thank you, Clyde, but unfortunately, your opinion isn't worth anything here because you're not a selectman. Meeting adjourned. No. Adjourned. He'll kill me. He'll set his dogs on me. There's no telling what he'll do. I'm not going to do it. He might draw a knife on me. I'm surprised at you, Clyde. You don't want the whole town to know that you're afraid of Tobias Brown, do you? Oh, I'm not afraid of him. And anyway, how's the whole town to know, even if I was? You wouldn't want to read it in Doyle McGee's paper, would you? Listen, if Doyle McGee so much as one line, I'll... Glad you're here, Doyle. Herb and me just accepted Clyde's offer to put Tobias Brown in his place. As the other selectmen, you can make it unanimous. I didn't offer no such a thing, Doyle. I just said that they ought to... I say again. I, I didn't offer no such a thing, Doyle. I just said that they... I approve of that action, Finus. I think Clyde's offer should be publicized. Shows a fine civic spirit. But what's to be gained by getting Clyde all stove up by Tobias Brown? Oh, might be hard for you to bake with a lot of broken arms and legs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all is just joking. Y'all are just a bunch of jokers. Oh, it's an easy one. So last time I'll come in this place, you'll have to make one more trip to pay for your coffee. <laughs> Easy. Hey, Paul, Ma want you. Can I have a hamburger? No, you may not. Ah, oh, gee. <laughs> I'm sorry, Finus. Ain't no matter, Willie. He does it all the time. Seems to me the whole town would be better off if you dusted him out once in a while. After all, you're his father and the principal of his school. What more excuse do you want? Yes, I, I really must do something about the boy. And I'd better see what his mother wants. Here, let me get this. Thank you. I'll pay for yours, too, Reverend. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Brother Davis. Thank you, Finus. Good day, Finus. Bye. Hi, Finus. Thank you. 
This is Finest Dory, Delphi's sole restaurateur. <laughs> Pay no attention to him, kid. He likes them big words. What's your name? Byron Turner, sir. How about giving Byron one of your bigger and better hamburgers, Finest? I'll have a cup of coffee. We got some mighty fine chili. Give him a hamburger. New recipe. You're taking advantage of a stranger, Finest. Hamburger. I like chili, sir. All right, Byron. You brought it on yourself. Give him a bowl of chili. Get some of those Havanas you like in the case, Doyle. Bribery, huh? There you are, son. Let me have that before you kill yourself. Help yourself. Thanks. Very fine cigars. I wish you'd get rid of that sign, Finest. Makes me thirsty every time I see it. Well, if your newspaper had done something, when Miss Anna Love Price organized the town women in that dry crusade, I'd still be selling beer. Public opinion, Finest. A good newspaper man never fights public opinion. Well, a good newspaper man will have to drink coffee and like it. Oh, who, who's the boy? Oh, just a kid trying to get to Florida in less than a dollar. Where is he from? I don't know. I'd say there was an orphan asylum in his background from that shirt. Oh. What are you going to do with him? I don't know that either. But I can see he leaves here with nearly five dollars instead of just one. Hmm, that's why you're such an easy mark for these kids. Oh, this one's different, fine. I've got kind of a hunch about him. Hunch, huh? I bet he'll leave town as soon as he finishes that chili. Oh, finest. <laughs> Unless we can get him some kind of a job. There ought to be something you can do around here. Well, I can use them at the shop, but I appreciate the thought. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Please, don't insult me. I'm not one of those things you told the kid I was a restaurateur. I am an ex saloon keeper running a chili parlor. That's what you think. Doyle? Finest? Are you uh, grieving, boy? No, sir. I'm very happy. Full of chili, Fred? You know better than I. Up. Cup of coffee. Doyle, when are you going to get that horse of yours shod? Well, I don't see any reason for adding steel to that kick of his. You own a horse, Mr. McGee? <laughs> In a manner of speaking, he does. Uh, how about some more chili? No, thank you, sir. It was very good. Second one's always on the house. What the? This is a very polite lad you've got here, McGee. <coughs> Could I have a glass of water, please, sir? You certainly can. Your horse ran away again, Mrs. McGee. I'll call him. Come on, Byron.
this a barn? Yes, sir. Okay. Come on, boy. papers now? It hasn't come to that yet, Tobias. It may, though. Well, you've never been much for friendly visits. You must have something on your mind. What is it? I always thought you Missourians beat around the bush a little bit in the horse trade. Oh. Well, if it's Twister you're talking about, the deal's been made. You got the horse and I got my receipt for the printing bill and that's all there is to it. Not quite, Tobias. I accepted Twister in payment of that bill because you said he was a good horse. That may have been what I said, McGee, but you'll find that the paper that I signed guarantees Twister to be a registered standard bred, sound in wind and limb, and that is all. <laughs> Shut up. Still looks sound to me. What you got against him, McGee? I'm afraid he may kill somebody, Tobias. He's already torn Henry Craig's livery barn down, run away half a dozen times. Found out he could kick, huh? I'll tell you something, McGee. That horse has got the finest trot in blood in Missouri. And if I could find me a sulky that he wouldn't kick to pieces, you couldn't have had him for a thousand dollars. The only reason you took him is you thought you could sell him for a quick profit. I'm not above taking a profit, Tobias. But I'll still consider the bill paid if you'll take him off my hand. I got your receipt, you got the horse. He's done enough damage around here already. Now, I don't care if you shoot him, just get him off my place. <laughs> you pretend you're a tough man, Tobias, but you don't fool me. You're whistling in the dark. He's just you. trying to say that I'm afraid of that horse? No, you've got physical courage enough, but you strut and swagger around, hoping that nobody will know that you're a lonely man. Not me, McGee. I'm too busy to be lonely. I've done all right for myself. Yes, you have. you become a wealthy man. You've got blooded horses, prized dairy stock. You're probably the largest single depositor in the Delphi Bank. You certainly own more rich farmland than any man around here. Who are you going to leave it to, Tobias? Simpson here? Come on, Brian. I've said enough. I'm glad Mr. Brown didn't take him back. Glad you're glad, Byron, but it kind of leaves me in a hole. 
Masters got no place to keep him. I've got an idea, Mr. McGee. Well, I've always maintained that a good editor ought to be the first to encourage a new idea. Well, let's have it. Well, you know that place we passed down the road? The empty one? Yeah, the, the old Lamro farm. Well, it's got a good barn. I can take real good care of Twister there. Just can't move on to the place barn. It's not ours. Well, maybe the Lamros would let us use it. But they don't own it anymore. Well, who does own it, sir? State, I guess. Probably be up for tax sale one of these days. Lamoureux's left a long time ago. Well, couldn't we just use it for a little while? I'd take real good care of it. I thought you went to get to Florida. Oh, I do, sir. But I could stay for a little while. Till you can do something about Twister. Well, all right, Byron. I'd just soon pay you as anybody else. Let's go take a look at it. Byron, I'm just no good at this. You just take it easy, Mr. McGee. I'll fix that. Yeah, but this is all too much for a boy. You need help. I can't even saw a true line or drive a nail straight. But you do an awful good job with words, sir. Thanks, son. It's probably about the nicest compliment I'll ever get. Hey, and talking about words, I better get back to the paper. It's makeup day. Oh, it's also payday. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Thank you, sir. I must say it's a lot more fun paying you than it was Henry. Oh, I'll bring some food out for Twister after work. Should have warned you about turning it off. Red Mueller turns it on in the morning and I let it run till I'm through with it. Could I try, sir? No, I don't think so, Barn. It's pretty rough. Sometimes it jumps. Might get hurt. But I know how to. You sure? I think I can start it. All right. You sure this will get me to town now? Yes, sir. Just don't play around with the gas and the spark. Play is scarcely the word I'd use. start a machine like you can. Where did you learn how? The school where I went. <laughs> That's a funny kind of a school. It must have been a reform school. That's the only one I know where they teach trades. How do you know? You ever go to one? I certainly did not, and you know better than that. Well, don't say he did then. I'll say anything I want to, and he can't do anything about it. I bet he can beat you till you get the blind staggers. Couldn't you? I don't want to fight anybody. Well, you'd better not fight me. Hey, watch what you're doing. That costs money. Oh, I'll pay for it. Hey! You won't have to pay for that.
Your office said that I'd find you here. Now that you found me, won't you join me? This is not exactly a social call. I'm here to talk to you about that boy, Barn. Well, shall we go over to the office? This will only take a minute. Would you care for some coffee? No, thank you. Well, Miss Price? I'm very disturbed, Mr. McGee, about Barn. Well, in what way? Well, just look what he's done to Jimmy. I feel that he's a bad influence. We don't know anything about him, and I think he should be sent back to wherever he came from. Now, wait a minute, Miss Price. Many years ago, when I came here, the people of Delphi didn't know where I'd come from. They didn't run me out of town. And I don't think I've been a bad influence. Oh, come now, Mr. McGee. You're one of Delphi's leading citizens. Thank you, Miss Price. I think Byron has the qualities that make him a useful citizen, too. Then how do you explain his roughneck behavior? Well, I, I can't. Do you know how it started? Well, Red and I went out to the Lamaru farm to see what Byron was doing, and I broke some glass, and, and Byron got mad. Well, I guess he had a right to. Sounds pretty normal to me. But this boy has no one responsible for him. That's not normal. No, it isn't. But I intend to be responsible for him. Very well, then. I only hope for your sake that you're right. Thank you, Miss Price. Come, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. You know what I'd do if I were you, Jimmy? What? I'd go on out there and ask Byron to give me a couple of boxing lessons. Jimmy, are you coming? Doyle, I've got to hand it to you. Let's have a coffee on it. That's right. Now, look. Now, I want you to come in under my punch. Right here. Now, see? No, no. You go right to the chin, all right? Oh, well, that's better. Oh, huh? no. Oh, I'm not getting anywhere. And I'm winded. Ah, your left ain't no good. Yes, yeah, that's so. Hey, you're picking on a littler guy. You better be good, Red. He's gonna make a real boxer. Thing I like about you, you aren't afraid to take a punch. No, I, I guess I'm not afraid to take a punch. You need some speeding up, though. We can get that on the bag. I guess so. Where are you gonna get a punching bag? Well, I got one. Mr. McGee found me an old one. Chicker's the man! School's out. You two can go. Well, see you tomorrow. Maybe. I don't want all the kids in Missouri hanging out here. I didn't know you owned this land, sir. My hunt here, it's the same thing. Too many kids hanging around spooks the birds. Keep them out of here. Does that mean I can stay, sir? Well, as long as you behave yourself, no get in my way. Say, uh, I seen you working that horse out on a jip rope the other day. Now, where'd a wandering boy like you ever learn that? I snuck under the fence and watched you work your horse, sir. Well, you couldn't have had a better teacher. I guess I know more about trotting horses than anybody in Missouri. You got a head on you. Did you ever think of taking up farming? Oh, yes, sir. I'd like that. I'll make you an offer. You come over to my place Monday after next, and I'll teach you how to plow the right way. When you've learned, you'll plant your own crop. I'll be there, bright and early. The earlier, the better. Remember, a good farmer works from cane to cane. What's that, sir? When he can't see in the morning, he can't see at night. All right, now, you watch me. Now, get. Get up.
I'll take care of them mules. We'll finish this field tomorrow. You can make it. Yes, sir. I'm all right. It's a little tired. Plowing's a man's job. You get here earlier, I'll do it myself. Yes, sir. I didn't expect to see you here. I had a hunch it would work out something like this. Let me see those hands. Ow. Oh, boy, you should have stopped before those blisters broke. All right, come on over here and stick your head under the pump. All right, now your hands. Sixteen, sir. You sure it's sixteen? Well, nearly sixteen, sir. You still think it was a good idea to plow for Tobias? Like I said, sir, it's only until I can plow his fields and get my own crop in. But why, Byron? What do you want to be, a plowman? That's only part of it, sir. I want to be a farmer, awful bad. Hard work, son. Bad years can be the most heartbreaking work in the world. Yes, but if you're a good farmer, like Mr. Brown, it can be the best thing in the world. I want to be somebody, Mr. McGee. Make a place of my own. I don't want to have to ask anybody for anything. For food, a place to sleep, anything. Farming's the only way I can get it. Well, I don't know how old you are, Barn. I'll gamble it's not 16. But you're certainly thinking like a man. I've done a lot of things. But I was 40 years old before I realized I couldn't be happy unless I was my own boss. How you've come to that at your age beats me. But if farming's what you want, so help me, Hannah, I'll see that you get it. Better get to bed, son, before you drown in that stew. Good night. You ain't getting anywhere. Here, let me show you. Wanna try to out bull a plow? Make the weight work for you. Use your brains, not your back. Yes, sir. You've done a fair in the middle of the job, boy. Not bad at all. Well, you can go now. But, sir, I was planning to take the rig over to my place. I was figuring to feed there tonight and start my plowing in the morning. Well, that's the way you figured it, huh? Well, I didn't feed these mules all winter just so you could use them. But you promised me, Mr. Brown. You said I could make my own crop. Well, I ain't gonna stop and you go make your own crop, but you ain't gonna use my gear. Now go on with you. I don't want you loitering on my property. You made a deal with me, Sure, Mr. I Brown. made a deal with you. I told you I'd learn you to plow. I've learned you. You plow real good. Now, the next time you make a deal with somebody, be sure you get it in writing. Then you know where you stand. Yeah, yeah.
I don't see why I can't have another cup of coffee. Because I ain't serving nothing during this committee meeting. Oh, now, let's sure. get on with it. Let's get to the main business of this meeting. Good idea. Now, we all feel it's going to be a good crop year. And folks will want a bang-up celebration this 4th of July. We always have a bang-up time. Here, here. Fred, you'll handle the music like always. Me and the boys have been limbering up over in the schoolhouse. We'll be there with bells on. We heard it's very good, nice too. Oh, they sound fine. Uh, Herb, you'll be the decorating committee. Lots of bunting. We'll want lots of bunting this year. I got a hold of some badges I thought you'd all like to see. And some rosettes, big ones. Beautiful. Rosettes? Well, you had them on the speaker's table last year, and they look like old mm. Ned. And those black ones made everybody think that you was trying to drum up trade for your undertaking business. Those black rosettes were for George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Well, they've been dead quite a spell. Let's keep it all red, white, and blue this year. Here, here. And with the committee's approval, I will read my 4th of July oration. You've recited it every 4th of July since I can remember. How come you're going to read it this year? Reading is a theatrical term for reciting. A little more worldly knowledge wouldn't do you any harm, Mr. Hamilton. Here, here. If you're so all fired smart, Mr. Poole, why don't you just forget it this year? Nobody ever listens to it anyway. Oh, well, now, just a minute. What do you mean, no? I'll go along with that. It's the truth. You must have a speech on the fourth of July. You must have. I've been giving the same argument. You just can't stand the truth. That's the trouble with you. Why? I'm sorry, Herb. Quiet. I the truth. Quiet, please. Shut up. We've got to be democratic about this thing. Willie Poole is going to make his speech or there won't be any 4th of July at all. Hear, hear. Henry, if you'd quit hearing so much and would listen a little more, we could get done with this meeting. Now, is there any other business to come before the committee? Yes, there is. I think we ought to wind up the parade with my wife, uh, Mrs. Hamilton, playing the Calio. The word is calliope, Clyde, and that wheezy old thing nearly ruined the parade last year. I don't see why Fred Mueller ever bought it. Didn't exactly buy it, Willie. Took it in on a shoe and bill when that circus went broke here three years ago. Mm -hmm. To write good steam Kelly Oak, too, except one of the valves won't work on it. One valve don't make no difference. Now they can play around it. That's what I say. All right, Miss Hamilton plays the... Steam organ. Them with skittish horses take warning. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Move, we adjourn. Here, here. That ain't parliamentary. Second it. It's been moved and seconded, we adjourn. All those in favor signify in the usual manner. Aye. Here, here, here. here. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee and donuts for everybody. <laughs> Don't pour no coffee for me now, because I won't drink it. How are you, son? Fine, sir. Anything wrong? No, sir. I'm all right. I'm just a little tired, that's all. The way you've been going at it, anybody'd be tired. You better take a few days off before you start putting in your own crops. I won't be putting in a crop of my own, sir. Oh, that's so? Yeah. I think I forgot to check the fire under the lead pot. Could burn the whole town down. You want to walk over to the office while I check it? Yes, sir. Okay. You leaving, Doyle? Just a few minutes, Juanis. I'll be right back. Well, 
quite a delegation you got here. Gonna ask me to run for Congress? Uh, we... Well, speak up, little man. Speak up. I don't bite school teachers this early in the morning. Leaves a bad taste in my mouth all day. We're here as the Delphi Board of Education, Tobias. Mr. Poole, our chairman, wants... I got all the education I can use. Willie Poole here can't teach me a thing. Uh, well, it isn't that, Mr. Brown. It's just the other way around. Uh, the reverse of the coin, so to speak. We understand that you have been giving plowing lessons. Well? <clears throat> That's exactly why we're here. In accordance with the laws of this state, it's our duty to ascertain that the pupil has been properly instructed. You plowed that field over there. Take a look for yourself. Oh, no, no, that won't do, Mr. Brown. That won't do at all. We actually have to see the boy plow and observe your methods of instruction to see if you're qualified. Well, that's a bunch of... Oh, no, it isn't, Mr. Brown. The law is very precise on this point, isn't it, gentlemen? Definitely. Since all your fields seem to be plowed by us, we'll, uh, we'll have to ask you to bring your mules and plow over to the Lamoro farm. I don't have the time. Oh, but you must, Mr. Brown. This is tantamount to an examination. It must be conducted legally. Uh, hitch up. What? If you please. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, not yet. Oh, dear, no, it's not nearly over. Have you reached a decision, Mr. Poole? I'm unable to give my opinion at the moment, Mr. McGee, but it does appear that Byron needs further instruction. Oh, we're not prepared to state that you are entirely at fault, Mr. Brown, but we must have more furrows. Uh, please. Now watch this closely, Byron. There'll be no more furrows you expect me to plow on. You folks want to laugh at somebody, can laugh at each other. Just a minute, Tobias. If you defy the Board of Education, we'll have to report it to Judge Wheeler. You know him. He's death in any violation of the school laws. You, uh, you wouldn't want to get mixed up with anything like that, would you? There's the plow and the mules. That you set out to get for him, isn't it? You bring him back when you're through. You learn fast now. There's still a few things I can teach you. Well, we did it. We did it. <laughs> but I got a hunch he's going to be harder to get along with than ever now. No worse than he ever was. Tromping around. You go on out there and let me do it, huh? You keep a clean place, I'll say that for you. Oh, hey, Mr. Brown, you scared me. You're doing all right here. Nice house to live in, good barn, crop in the ground. It hasn't cost you a cent. I'd say that's pretty good for a reform school, kid. I'm no reform school kid, sir. I don't care what you were. You're on your own now. And you're going to pay your own way, too. This here is a deed. A deed to this farm. I own it. You, uh, 
Want to stay on here? Yes, sir. Can you pay rent? No, sir. I'm afraid I can't. Well, then it looks like I'll have to take that crop as payment. The whole crop, sir? You don't have a share crop agreement with me in writing, do you? No, sir. Then the whole crop. Look, I've told you to set up all your deals in writing. When it comes to money, time, and labor, never take a man's word for it. Make him sign. Yes, sir. Could you give me a paper saying that I can stay here for my crop? That's better. I'll have one drawn up. Oh, yeah, and the first thing you're going to have to do is to get rid of that horse. But I can't, sir. He's Mr. McGee's horse. That's just why I don't want him on my land. But Mr. McGee has no other place to keep him. That's McGee's problem. Now, turn him out. No, sir. Please wait until Mr. I'm never wait. All right, you hop. <laughs> don't you get smart with me. Twister, don't twist her. out here fast. Well, it looks like a concussion. Bad? I don't know, Finest. You know how it happened, Tobias? Maybe the horse kicked him. It doesn't look like a kick wound to me. Me neither. Maybe you think I did it. They didn't say that, Tobias. They think so? Well, I guess they do. After all, you were the only one with the boy. You and the horse. How bad is he? Well, we won't know till the doctor gets here. I wish I knew how it did happen. Maybe you will someday. Hold on, Tobias. Some on your mind, friend. I reckon it can wait. I thought so. I swear to God, you can't say that. Look at 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 that. Look won't know really till Doc Barker gets here. How did it happen? What hit him? Did Tobias beat him? Of course he beat him. Well, he then that's the, the last straw. The minute straw. I heard the news, I said Tobias you Brown did it. You see, written all over him as he stood there. Well, he and the kid has gone too far. He threatened the kid the day of the plowing. Y'all heard him. Yeah. Don't do something about it. There you go with your days again, Clyde. We ought to do something about it. That's what I do. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're all going off half cocked to act like a lynch mob. We don't neither. All we want's a fair shake for the boy. That's right. Tobias can't whoop kids around here and get away with it. Here, here. They ought to form a posse and drag him off to jail. Well, what are you going to charge him with? Assaulting the kid and battering him and whipping the boy. And nonsense, Clyde. Look, you haven't got one single witness against him. You're condemning a man on what two excited boys think they saw. It's not going to hold Now you, wait a minute, Doyle. We came out here because we like this kid. Yes. And we think Tobias Brown beat him. We yeah, sure do. And I think we ought to drag Tobias up to Sheriff Peavy and Kenneth if it takes every man in Delphi to do it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, look. Now, I know I can't stop all of you, but I can sure make one or two of you know that I tried. All right, Finest. Whose side are you on? The kids or Browns? Yeah. Browns right now. You've been a friend of mine for a long time, Doyle. But I can't hold with you, and you hey, won't. Byron's calling for you. Don't let them do anything to Mr. Brown. He couldn't help it. It was an accident. He 
didn't even know I was behind him. All right, Furness. If you want to drag Tobias up to Kenneth now, I won't try to stop you. Any of you. Well, I guess if we had any sense, we'd all go home and let the lad get some sleep. Come on, let's get out. Mm. How is Barn, Mr. Doherty? Oh, a lot better, Miss Price. He's in here, Doc. Good evening, Good evening, Good evening, Good evening, Good evening Doc. Good evening, Doc. One of us in this room should be heartily ashamed. Why, what's the matter, Miss Price? Well, just look at this place. And to think we've allowed this boy to live like this. Oh, it's clean. So is a rain-washed rock, but it isn't a home. I'm sure every one of us has something that would help to make this a more decent place in which to live. I've got some nice dimity curtains I'm not using. And there's a good Brussels carpet stored in our barn. And I'll have Clyde bring out our old cook stove. Yeah. And I have a number of things. If you ladies will meet at my house tomorrow afternoon, we can organize. That's one. Last oh. time she organized, we lost our beer. Uh, if we could uh, rely on the use of your truck, Mr. Neely. It's possible, just possible. Now, don't forget, ladies, tomorrow afternoon at my house. Oh, you plumb surprised a lot of folks here tonight, Miss Price. Who'd ever thought you'd go traipsing all over the county trying to find a doctor for a poor sick boy? Your granddad'd be mighty proud of you. So are we. Thank you, Miss Neely. And now I think I'd like to go see Barn. Inside, tell him I'm doctoring the horse. What do you want? Oh, I come to doctor the horse. I didn't have my medicine with me yesterday. How's the boy? You'll be up and around tomorrow. Well, I better get to work. How are you, Twister? <laughs> oh, I see. Got some bruises here. No cuts, old boy. You'll be all right. You'll be all right, boy. Another go at Tobias Brown in a couple of days. Fine horse, that. Fine horse. You, uh, you didn't learn all that in the chili parlor, either. I didn't ask you where you learned to handle that bag like a professional. You have got no cause to pry into how I learned about horses. Might interest the good people of Delphi if they really knew about both of us. But uh, I don't see any point in disillusioning them. I can keep my mouth shut if you can keep yours shut. <laughs> keep my mouth shut's not my long suit, but under the circumstances, you've got a deal. No talk. No Can't talk. Shake on it. Oh, Miss Price. Mr. McGee, Mr. Doherty. How do you like Byron's house now? Why, it's real elegant, Miss Price. I must say, it really looks like a home now. How is Twister? 
Oh, he's just fine. He's a good horse, Miss Price. I'm so glad you think so. That's what I want to talk to you about. As a former horse trainer, Mr. Doherty, <laughs> perhaps I should explain that during our dry campaign here in Delphi, the WSCTU made quite a thorough check into your background. You know, you have quite a racing record. Uh, they took quite a keen interest in you also, Mr. McGee, because of your editorial stand, that is. I was quite surprised to learn that you used to be a boxer. If you won't say nothing, I won't. I'm afraid the cat's out of the bag, Finest. Well, what I really want to know is, do you think Twister is worth training to race? Well, I don't know, Miss Price. I don't know as I can say. Uh, he's well-bred. Well, I know he is, but there are more problems to training a horse than you probably know about. I think Twister can be trained. Well, I'm out of the business, Miss Price. I, I've gone straight. Besides, I don't have anything to train them with. Will you gentlemen please come with me? find everything you need here. Where did you get it? It's my gift to Byron. Now do you think Twister can be trained? I wouldn't be surprised if he could. Well enough to beat Tobias Brown? Yes, ma'am. Well enough to beat Tobias. I'm out of it. He's uh, lost that gant look. This horse is coming on. Thank you, sir. Too bad you got to get rid of him. This is a legal dispossessed notice. Gives you 30 days to quit my property. But we had a deal, Mr. Brown. My crops for the rent. You were going to give me a paper saying so. But you never got that paper, did you? You just forgot about it. I warned you, I told you to get all your deals in writing. A man's got to do that if he ever wants to mount anything. I guess I did forget, sir. But you gave me your word. That's just a point, boy. Never take any man's word in a business deal. Fortunes are lost that way. If you had that paper, I couldn't make you get off my property. But you see, I need that house for the hired hands at harvest time. Now, this is the 1st of July. I want you off my property the 31st. <laughs>
good boy, Christopher. I want to talk to you. I didn't want to see you, sir. Well, I knew that when I found your note. I can understand your willingness to leave me, but I didn't think you'd leave Twister. I didn't want to, sir. But I've got to go. Byron, I, uh, I've got some things I want to say to you. They're, uh, they're personal things, but... Well, I, I think they're important. Yes, sir. Sit down, boy. You see, I, uh, I ran away when I was about your age from an orphan asylum, too. And then I, uh, I tried to run away from everything. Finally, an old newspaper man took me in. He gave me a job, a home. Even gave me a name. Didn't you have a name either, Mr. McGee? Well, I, I had one, but it wasn't mine, so I took his. The old man died before the adoption papers he'd applied for had cleared the red tape. I'm sorry about that, sir. I've been sorry about that all my life. Did you run away again? Yeah, all over this blessed country. And all I had to do was to stop and face myself. And I could have had everything a man has a right to want. Home, family, my roots in the ground. But it's too late now. But it's not too late for you, Byron. You see, when I look at you, it's like, it's like looking into one of those mirrors that Hans Christian Andersen used to write about. You know, the kind that lets you look into the past? Yes, sir. Looking at you is like looking at me, like I was when I was running. I get sick at heart all over again. Because I learned the hard way, Byron. The bitter, lonely, hard way that it's no go. It's just no go, Byron. You can't run away from yourself. But you see, sir, it isn't exactly me that I'm running away from. I've just got to get away from here. Why? I'd rather not say, sir. All right. Suppose I answer my own question. You're afraid Tobias Brown will turn you in as a runaway from the Edendale Orphan Asylum. And you'd rather run blindly anywhere than go back there and be Byron Turner Gillow again. Isn't that the truth of it? Yes, sir, I guess it is. I just couldn't go back there ever. But you don't have to, Byron. You're not an orphan anymore. You're a part of Delphi. That's fine for me, sir, but what becomes of Twister? You can't take care of him. You told me so. Maybe if we could have raced him, things would have been different. We will race him, Byron. You mean that, sir? I give you my solemn word on it. Boy. Now will you give the folks of Delphi a chance to prove that they're solidly behind you? Yes, sir. Okay, son. Now we're in business again. I'll race you to the car. The thing that beats me is the way this kid has got to us all. 
And if he was an uppity boy, well, he'd have been cold-shouldered out of this town long ago. But he just goes along nice and easy, like, well, uh, like a good, dependable man would. As William Shakespeare said, I never knew so young a body on so old a head. Or uh, the other way around. You're always a quoting somebody. Don't you never think up anything yourself? Well, William Shakespeare was, was there. Ain't you coming, Fias? No, me and Doyle have some important business with Tobias. <clears throat> the diner will be closed officially for 10 minutes. Star chamber stuff, huh? Well, I'm the public. You can't put me out of a public place. I can keep throwing you through these windows till you're wore out. Come on, Clyde. Oh, that's trouble with our schools. Teachers don't have no backbone. Don't do something about it. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? That tax sale was 10 months ago, Finus. What? Why didn't somebody tell me? When people send for me, I generally tell them to come see me. And I'm curious about you, McGee. What's on your mind? With my compliments. Well, Tobias, the uh, folks are planning on quite a celebration for the... I'm not interested. Well, we thought, Tobias, that uh, maybe a horse race in the afternoon would liven things up. A horse race? Yeah, nothing elaborate. Uh, say, a uh, match race between your best trotting horse and Twister. My best horse and Twister? Well, I could beat that kicking idiot with one of my milk cows. <laughs> I've got a thousand dollars that says you can. Come on now, McGee. I don't bet that kind of money even on a sure thing. Well, Tobias, I'll tell you how sure a thing I think it is. Now, you bought that Lamoral farm for $500 on the tax sale. I'll put up my $1,000 against that farm. Two to one? Well, that's what it sounds like. Oh, so you can give it to that uh, reform school brat if my horse should break a leg or something, huh? What I do with the farm, if I win, is my business. You gonna drive? No, Byron will drive. He owns the horse now. Where's the race gonna be? From the speaker's stand out around the lake and back. Thousand dollars, a lot of money, McGee. You got it. There it is. You got a bet. Of course, we'll have to get it in writing. We kind of figured you'd want to make it legal, Tobias, so we had Herb draw up this agreement. It's okay with you. I'll be the stakeholder. Oh, sure. All right. Thanks, Tobias. Well, don't thank me. I'll enjoy showing the folks at Delphi that I can beat them any way they want to come at me. If your judgment of horses isn't what I hope it is, I'm going to be running the most heavily mortgaged newspaper in Missouri. Twister will win. I know he can. Ready!
Take your hat off, Tad. You got one. I said take it off, boy. <laughs> Good boy. Wishful thinking. <laughs> well, well, that's it. Well, it's your turn now, uh, Willie. your minds. Now, my good friends and neighbors, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the chairman of our Board of Education, Mr. Willie Poole. Yeah. You tell him, Willie. Thank you, <laughs> My father knew Abraham Lincoln. My father knew Abraham Lincoln and loved him. Uh, but Abraham Lincoln was only one of our great immortals. Say, so, we ought to stay here. We you can back. wait a little while. This I ain't gonna do it. I can take Lincoln or leave him. But if Abe could hear Willie, he'd cloud him with one of them spit rails of his. Well, somebody ought to listen to him. And we would be both. Well, Byron, I guess it's time we got Twister ready for the race, hmm? But I'd like to hear Mr. Poole, sir. You can hear him next year, Byron. He never changes it. The pages of history are dotted with the names of our glorious leaders, men like Washington 
Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and Teddy Roosevelt, and men like Whitby Love, who stands there guarding the square of Delphi with his head held proudly, his sword at his side, symbolizes everything that we hold dear here in Delphi and all the others. Abe Lincoln's name stands high at the top of the Those poor devils are dying. Howdy, Sheriff Peavy. Well, Jim, how are you? How are you? Howdy, Mark. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Howdy, Eddie. Good to now, see you. Hello, boys. I'll get to all of you. But I want you to understand what you're getting into. Tobias Brown is going to cover every dollar bet two to one. Now, uh, come at me one at a time. Twenty on oh, yeah. big book here. The uh, Herb will take the money. All right. Finest. Right. Finest. 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 Uh, wait your turn, will you? Finest, I want to have some words with you. Oh, sure thing, Sheriff. We got a situation here, Finest. I know you Delphi people feel mighty strong about this boy. And his horse. And I'd like to see him win, too. But we got a no-gambling law. And if money changes hands in a horse race, somebody's going to the lockup. And I wouldn't want to see that happen. Well, I'm opposed to it myself. Now then, I'd never let it be said that Marvin Peavy was a man to circumvent the law. But there's more than one way to stuff a goose, I always say. Now, I can't let you take bets. But I owe you and ain't betting. I don't follow you too close. It's as easy as sleeping in church. You take IOUs from them folks. After the race, collect on the IOUs. Then if you want to give that money to Tobias Brown or vice versa, there ain't no law again it. I owe you and ain't gambling. Been doing it all my life. I'm sure obliged to you, Sheriff. It certainly makes a man feel good to know he's upholding the law. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, fellas, put your money in your pocket and just sign an IOU for your bet here. Oh, now, let me... Here's, 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 here's. Thine own self be true, and it must follow, as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Hear, hear. And it was so aptly put by that great naval leader of ours. Damn the torpedoes! Full speed ahead! Claire, here's some regulation goggles for you. And uh, here's a regulation hat. Now, uh, let Tobias set the pace. He'll expect you to break on top, and that could get you into trouble. If he's in front of you at least half the way, you can keep an eye on him. Good luck, lad. Good luck. Good luck, Mike. Now, if that's true in three school districts, that... Sorry to cut you short, Willie, but it's time for the race. If that is true All in right, three school folks, districts... All right, folks, post-time, post-time! You can imagine time, post what You haven't even let me finish my speech. We can finish it on Labor Day. We've got to start the race now. Are you gentlemen ready? Ready! Come on!
terrified for Barn. I've had more comfortable moments in my life, but I think you'll be all right. Can he win? The finest think so. He ought to know. Winner, Mr. Tobias Brown. Mr. McKee. It wasn't Twister's fault. I just didn't follow the orders. It's all right, Byron. Wait, wait, wait. Don't, don't, pay, don't pay him yet. There might have been a foul. We don't know for sure. The boy was ahead when they left here. There might have been a foul out there. Well, I'll bet there was a foul. It looked like a foul. Oh, he he ain't a kid. He ain't a kid. I shot out. Shut it out. What's this about a foul? Why don't we ask the boy? Well, oh, Byron, come here a minute. Were you fouled? It wasn't any foul, Mr. Doherty. I forgot to follow your instructions. Satisfies me. You're going to be a man someday, boy. You ain't one yet, but you're going to be. Let's go, Byron. Hamilton. For 10 years, you've been trying to get me run out of town, tired and feathered and lynched. But every time I come to town, you run and hide in that flower barrel of yours. Well, I just about had enough. Of Don't you think Clyde's a little out of your class, Tobias? You think you're in my class, McGee? I think so. tries to stop them. Excuse me. Stay away from my Steve Kelly, old.
this won't do, men. It won't do at all. We got a no right in law in this county. But that man-to-man fight is an athletic contest. Now, let's do this right. You gentlemen, come up the tall. Where are the two men fighting? Come up here. When I blow my whistle, you come out fighting. Fair fight, no favor. I think I've got another punch in me. Someday. Someday you're gonna have to show me how that left works. I'll show you. No, wait. No, wait. Stop it. a horse race today, but you just about won a whole town. I give a whole lot for standing in your shoes right now. How'd you like to share cry? the Lamoureux place with me? That depends, sir. Make you a deal. You crop it, I'll take 10%. And when you're 18, 18 years old, I'll sell it to you. If you're half the man I think you are, you have the money by then. Well, how's that, Byron? All right with you? No. No? I want it in writing. <laughs> That's more like it. You get it in writing. McGee will see to that. Yes, sir, again, Tobias. Here, here. Go ahead, Tobias. Go ahead and kiss her. She's the only one didn't hit you. <laughs> Go ahead and kiss her. Tobias, let's go to finest and sign that paper. No, wait. Let's all go to my house. You understand the, the whole town will want to see this. The whole town's invited. Remember that day I told you the whole town wanted you here? Don't you think they've proved it? They've proved it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> 